Hi everyone, this is just a quick follow up um, on ZBrush relief tools um, just to talk about some of the things I've been playing with and what's working and what's not. At the end of the last video I said I was going to go away and have a go with the PIF UHD um, code to see what happened and see whether we could use it to to make some portraits in ZBrush. It really, it really didn't work at all. Um, the algorithm's designed to work on full body models so it takes a a kind of sample model so whatever picture you feed into it it takes the sample model to help it generate the the 3d um, it was just too rough it wouldn't work on portraits alone so i completely scrapped that um, but i've been trying some other stuff so I've, I've been having a play with human generator in blender um, which is which is okay it's it makes some nice humans um, but it's a bit lacking in in some of the other um, aspects it's not quite fluid enough what I found out worked quite well is this little thing design doll uh, which I use quite a lot to to make 2d references for figure work so if I need figures in a particular setup I make them in design doll because it's pretty quick it's all um, articulated along sort of human proportion so as you bend and twist it nothing goes out of Nothing goes out of whack. Everything stays as a as a sort of human body, more or less wood, and you can adjust. I mean, these are, these are all quite anime characters, but you can adjust it to to suit whatever sort of format of figure you want. But it's quite handy to export then this this as a picture and and use it as reference um, for a design. But you can also export it as a three D model, um, albeit a low resolution one. So that's what we've got here. Um, I've taken this fellow in from Design Doll and pasted it in like this and it's working fairly well so we'll just project the, the relief from there it's taking a while I've played with some of the settings in the relief um, to see what they do so I've upped the quality of it a little bit let me give it a second there we go right and then we'll turn that off and that's actually not not half bad it's Still chunky at the bottom, but we can we can deal with that. Um, there is a there is a setting that that allows you to discreetly mask this off while you're making the relief, which I saw in a video and I haven't been able to find since. So I'll go back to to play with that. But looking down at the settings, um, the top one relief repeat that's that's essentially a quality setting. So the higher that is, the the more um, the more passes the algorithm makes over your model and the, the, the sort of more detail it's picking up. The the ones too that I found make the most difference is this second one, relief step tolerance. Um, with that off, you get a lot of um, quite nasty sort of chamfers on it. Um, it loses a bit of the detail. Um, I think that's because it's it's basically looking at what's going on in your model between sort of um, areas of 3D. Uh, again, it's like a it's almost like a quality quality control thing. Relief contrast basically gives you the height. Um, between different sections of the model, which I want to try and keep as low as possible, um, so I bump that right down. It's still, it's still chunky, but it's not as chunky. And the the subtlety of relief within the actual model itself is is a lot better. Um, there's a lot less kind of variation in height. And this bottom one, relief blur, gives you a sort of chamfer on the edge, which, as I said last time, I think I would probably leave until later on and work around with it. So it's not bad. It's not bad. Um, but what I discovered as well alongside actually making the relief directly is you can you can turn it straight into an alpha so if you come up to your alpha menu there's a whole relief section under here it's basically the same thing um, but what it does is turn the whole thing into it will hopefully yeah into an alpha um, a relief alpha texture which means that what you can then do is something like this. So we'll pull this guy out. There's a uh, just a sphere, box standard sphere, and I can go to my clay brush, drag rectangle. I've now got this alpha here from my 3D model. And if I pull that out, it makes a a relief onto whatever it was I was I was working on. So I can see a lot of applications for that in terms of adding relief to. Um, 
other things. So um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make some chain mail, I think, make some some rings and some kind of things like balustrades on the tops of buildings where you've got little little pillars that sit behind each other and they're all a bit a little bit complex. I'm going to make some of those and turn them into turn them into little alpha brushes um, and see what we do there. Because what, what what I've always done in the in the past is is use these little kind of alpha shapes that I make um, to individually put balustrades in. But if I can make them into a into a brush from something more um, more solid with a bit more depth to it, that could be kind of interesting. So look, what, what are we going to do here? Let's try that. Let's try that again. We'll turn this turn this off. So if we just come up to alpha, uh, make relief from the alpha, and then come back to the, we'll turn that background off a wee bit. There we go. All right. The clay, that's, let's try that. So there it is. So it's not bad. I mean, it's got a bit of a, I don't, don't like the way it treats the contours but that's quite that's kind of funky isn't it so shields um crests oh my goodness crests when it come to making crests that's cr crisps crisps that's going to be quite a lot of fun making um stuff like that so yeah in terms of using it for um making custom portraits as i talked about before i think it's not quite there yet um, there are ways of doing it, but to be honest, I mean, uh, portraits, you're only looking at, I mean, it takes me three to four hours maybe to, to bulk out most of a portrait. Um, I'm not really saving much by, by going through this process. It, it's more about being able to get different viewpoints and, and maybe stuff that's a little harder to, to find. Um, what I might try next is some more 3D head stuff, um, but I'm going to pick myself a nice picture I'm thinking what I might go for is because it's one of my favorites is my desktop Gisa the glorious resurrector from Magic the Gathering I might see if I can build this and relief that out um, just for fun and see what see what happens so we'll give that a go uh, alternatively I might try um, this picture which was in my parents house for years and years and years the fairy feathers master stroke which is a great painting by richard richard dad lots going on in there i wonder how i could get by making that see how quickly we can make a, a relief out of that um, using some of these techniques so as ever stay tuned i'm not particularly good at making these videos but you know we'll see what we can we'll see what we figure out it's all good fun all right then Take care.